What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. On this video, I want to extend the topic of last week, which was how to hold your handstand longer. If you haven't watched that video, you can click up right here and go watch it right now so you understand what are we covering today. But basically, we took a look at the two main reasons on why you guys may be falling out of your handstand. Those two reasons are simply either muscle fatigue or a lack of balance. Last week, I did a little bit more emphasis on how to strengthen the muscle fatigue aspect of your handstand, but by reading through your comments, I realized that the biggest issue you guys are having is when it comes to balance. So I also mentioned that in order to strengthen the balance, the best thing that you can possibly do is just practice your handstand every single day so your body get used to being upside down. However, I know this is easier said than done and it can be very frustrating at the beginning to find balance. So what I did for this video is putting together my top five tips that has really helped me over the years to increase my overall sense of balance and my overall sense of awareness when I'm in a handstand. So if you are ready to take your handstand to the next level, let's get started. The first tip that I have for you is simply changing the position of your hand when you are doing a handstand. Most of us are used to simply putting our hand flat in the ground. We're also being told that we need to spread our fingers wide, which is true. But by placing our hand completely on the ground, we're only having one point of contact with the ground. What we want to try to do is create like a little fist and having three points of contact, which in this case are going to be the top of our fingers, our knuckles, and the bottom of our palms. This is gonna allow you to have better control over your handstand by giving you the feeling that you're actually grabbing the floor. Also, by putting your hands this way, instead of just using your fingers to press and prevent yourself from going over, right now you have the ability to actually pull the ground towards you with a lot more force than you would if you were only pressing. What this is gonna allow you to do is that every time your body wants to go over, you're gonna be able to bring your body back to a neutral position a lot more easier. And that brings me to the second tip, which also includes your fingers, and it is to stay on your palms as much as possible and only use your fingers when you need them. Because most of the time, every time we do a handstand, we tend to be a lot on our fingers. And when our body wants to go over, we don't have enough leverage or enough room to actually press a little more and bring our body back to the position. So by learning how to balance on our palms instead of our fingers, every time our body wants to go over, we can actually press with enough force to bring our body back. Think about it this way, when you're standing, you are never on your toes. You are actually on the back of your heels and if you were to fall forward, is when you use your toes to bring yourself back. We are not standing or we're walking every time on our toes because that would mean that if we go a little bit more forward, we're just going to fall. The same applies to your handstand. Keep the weight mostly on your palms, which is a little bit harder to balance, of course, but then once your body wants to switch forward, you're going to be able to press, or in this case, pull with your fingers with the first tip and bring your body back to a neutral balance position. The third tip is one that is really, really going to help you guys because I've been getting this question a lot and is that you guys are not having trouble when you go forward and you can use your fingers, you're able to bring yourself back. But the problem is that when your body goes back, you don't know how to release the pressure and bring your body back to the position. So the third tip that I have for you is going to be to increase the range of balance that you have in a handstand. What I mean by this is at the beginning, your range of balance is very, very tiny. This means that if you go a little bit forward, then you're gonna fall. And if you go a little bit backwards, you're also going to fall. Over time, this balance range is going to increase to the point that if you go forward, your body can almost go into a hollow back and you are able to bring it back. And if you're falling the other way around, you're able to go even all the way down to the floor and then bring your body all the way back up. Because to be honest, when your body is falling from the same direction that it came into the handstand, Sometimes it's not enough to just release the pressure of your fingers and use your palms. What you really need to do is actually engage your core enough so it is able to bring your legs back to neutral position. 
I'm also gonna leave you with an exercise for this particular tip, which for me is one of the best exercises you can possibly do to strengthen your core when you are in a handstand, and that would be handstand negative with your legs straight. So to do this, you're going to find a wall, get into your handstand as you normally would, and you're going to start bringing your legs together at the same time, as slow and as controlled as possible. Think about your hips going forward so they contrabalance the weight of your legs coming in the other direction. Because if you send your hips back in the same direction that your legs are going, all the weight is going to fall back and you're just going to smash the floor as fast as possible. So when performing this exercise, you wanna think about your hips shifting forward in the other direction that your legs are coming, which is back. Think about your hips going towards the wall while your legs are coming down towards the floor. You don't want to bring your feet back into like a downward facing dog, but you want to bring them as close to your hands as possible, like if you were doing a standing forward fall. Give it a try, give it a go, and I guarantee that this is gonna increase your core stability and core strength, so every time you're falling in the other direction of the handstand, you are going to be able to use your core to bring it back to neutral position. And that brings me to the fourth tip, which would be practicing other type of arm balances that are not your typical handstand. Because to be honest, handstand is one of the most difficult hand balances there is. So by practicing other type of hand balances, such as crow, crane, form stand, different variations of headstand, which are mostly yoga positions, but what this is going to do is allow your body to have a different sense of balance that is not always a handstand. By practicing crow, you're able to balance for a lot longer than if you would in a handstand. Same applies when you practice a supported headstand where you're taking your hands completely out of the equation and you're able to find a sense of balance without having to be on your hands. This is gonna allow you to hold the position for a lot longer and really focus on stabilizing your core and increasing your sense of balance. There are other positions I love, such as crane pose, which is a variation of crow pose, but with your arms straight, and this position can really help you to develop that straight arm strength. All these poses may require a completely separate video for me to explain them in detail, so if that's something you are interested in, please let me know in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to do that. But for the purpose of this video, just keep in mind that balance is not only achieved in a handstand. You can do many arm balances and even standing positions can really help you with your sense of balance. So don't settle with only practicing your handstand, give all this position a try and I guarantee that your sense of balance is just going to skyrocket. And that leaves us with the fifth and final tip of today, which is using different elements to balance that that is not the ground. This can include anything from doing a handstand on the grass, doing a handstand at the beach on the sand, which by the way, it is super hard, or using elements such as the parallels. What this is gonna allow you to do is force your body to balance in a different way and create new neuromuscular pathways. So you trick your mind, you trick your body, and then when you go back to the floor, your body's gonna be much, much ready to be upside down. You guys have asked me a lot to cover how to do a handstand on the parallels. And if you want a completely separate video for that, please let me know in the comment section down below. And also let me know what are you struggling with to balance on the parallels. Because to be honest, for me, balancing on the parallels, it is much, much easier. And for a lot of people, it is also much easier. So the only difference that I'm gonna point out here is that when you're in the parallels, there are two things that changes. First is the entry, which is the kicking up. You need to kick up much, much higher and much stronger depending on how high the parallels are. So that's the difficult part of doing a handstand in the parallels. Now, the easier part of doing a handstand in the parallels is that you are not relying on your fingers on your palms, but you are relying on your entire wrist strength. So the same way you are using your fingers to press, to bring yourself back to neutral position, now you're gonna grab the parallel and move the wrist forward in this direction so you send your body back to neutral position. You want to imagine like you're lifting 
the back part of the parlet, of course, without lifting the back part of the parlet, but that is gonna allow you to send your body back to neutral position. And once you're falling backward, you're going to release the pressure and press with the back of your palms, but also remember the other tip that I mentioned, which is also using your core strength and your core stability to be able to bring yourself back into a neutral position. So there you have it guys, those are my top five tips that has really has an impact on my hand balancing journey. I still do those tips and apply those tips till nowadays because they don't only help me hold my handstand longer, but they has completely changed and shift the way I perceive myself when I'm upside down. So give them a try, give them a go. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions about all these tips, if you want me to extend on any of the tips, and also let me know what else do you want me to cover on this channel. A couple days ago, I asked a question on my Instagram page, which if you're not following me is at Gabo Saturno, I'll put it somewhere right here so give me a follow but i asked a question about if you guys wanted me to start covering nutrition or if you guys wanted me to keep going with handstand i still have a lot to cover on handstand you guys want handstand push-ups handstand press which by the way those two topics are really extensive so i might do a completely series on its own for each of the topic but Please let me know in the comment section down below if you want to start with nutrition or if you want me to still cover the handstand for now. Of course, I will be covering both of those topics and a whole lot more on this channel, but I want to know your opinion on what do you want my next video to be. That's all for today, guys. I'm out. If you like the video, share some love, hit that like button for me. Also, share with a friend that can really benefit from all these tips and from all the previous videos. And if you happen to be new to the channel, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I will see you guys all next week. Peace.